to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscious dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then. He had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. Neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep, shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows? God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to all psalm will be, if you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand, but with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Let Israel wait for the Lord, for with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are those who hear the Word of God and observe it. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered the village, where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please join me in, in the intentions for this Mass. For peace in violent neighborhoods. And so we hear how Jonah is finally getting to Nineveh after he tried to run away, after he tried to run away from doing God's bidding, because God wanted him to go to Nineveh to proclaim to the people that they will be destroyed if they do not repent of their sins. And of course, Jonah, like many of us would be, who wants to go into that situation. Lord, that is not my fight, that is yours. And so we see how earlier, how he attempted to run away from his duties, to run away from his mission, to run away from being the disciple that God is asking him to be, to be a messenger of him, so others may, could repent and be saved. And then the amazing thing is, and we know later on that Jonah is not happy with what happens next, the people truly repent. He's only one day in through what would normally take three days to walk through. But then already the people believe what he said, that in 40 days it will be destroyed unless they repent. And both poor and rich alike repent. Put on sackcloth, set in ashes, pray and cry out to the Lord for forgiveness and for mercy. And even to the king himself, who does the same thing, where he proclaims that no one shall eat or drink. He shall pray and set in sackcloth and ashes until the Lord repents. And so we see this miracle happening. And so it can be said in many ways, wouldn't that be great if a prophet came through our town and said, repent, or you will be destroyed in 40 days, and that we would repent and do the will of the Lord. Because that's our salvation history. That's the journey we are called each and every day to remember that we are disciples, but that we often turn away. We don't go to the nth degree that we need to to recognize all the ways that we keep things to ourselves, that we aren't willing to give up things that will be bad for us, things that could even allow us to lose our life, both in this world and in the next. And so we should be like those people of Nineveh. We should put ourselves, at least spiritually, in sackcloth and ashes and crying out to the Lord, Lord, forgive us, show us mercy, give us what we need, show us the path we need to go on. And by doing so, there will be much rejoicing. The Lord will not destroy us, but lead us into what He want, has wanted all the time, that all of His people will come through the cross to His kingdom. Let us stand for our petitions. We pray for the church, that it may continue to be, always be a prophetic voice leading us back to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our faith community, that we may always see the possibilities of spreading the kingdom and the good news to all that we meet. Throughout our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those that are sick, those who are distressed, those who have no hope, that they will be given comfort and healing and guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those sick among us, especially those whose names have been placed in the book of the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and for those who will die today. That they may see the face of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray the prayer that is in the quiet of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Out of the depths of the Lord, we pray to you, asking that through your Son that we may be reconciled with you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praise is add nothing to your greatness, the prophet us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, her Pope, and Blaise, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus, Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And so let us be like the people of Nineveh who heard the word of God, who repented, who recognized what was not working well in their lives, that was keeping them not at full capacity of living and growing and being transformed as God was asking us to be. So how can we put on those spiritual sackcloth and ashes? How can we say, cry out to the Lord, Yes, forgive us and help us on the path to eternal life. Then today we will also say our Renew My Church prayer. Lord Jesus, you speak to us today as you spoke to holy men and women who have gone before us in every age and in our own time. You call to us and say, Renew My Church. Pour out the gift of your Holy Spirit upon us and so enable us to hear you clearly to listen to each other attentively, to imagine our future boldly, to discern your direction wisely, to persevere in your holy will courageously, to stay together in charity, to surrender our own plans readily, to embrace the greater good, to hand on your gifts to future generations. May we remain in the holy company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Apostles, Saint Joseph and all the saints, may their example and presence inspire us with patient confidence in the work of your grace. We ask this of you who live and reign with the Father and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And may you have a blessed day. His law he enforces, the stars in their courses, the sun in its orbit obediently shines. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the depths of the ocean proclaim God's divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with glad adoration a song. Let us raise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to 